Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Google Plus Hangout with the Buck Institute for Education. I'm John Larmer, Editor-in-Chief here at BIE. And this month will be a very special one where we're going to look at student work from projects during the year. Uh, our theme for the month is Spotlight Projects, and today it's about elementary school projects. So we have three great guests with us. Uh, the Hangout will last for about 30 minutes, and uh, then we'll sign off, but it will be archived. All our Hangouts are archived, and you can get to them through our website at bie.org. And if you want to ask questions, you can post them on the Google Plus events page, and we'll get to them either during the Hangout or toward the end if we're wrapping up. I can handle some questions. And you can always post questions there for after the Hangout if your question was in, uh, didn't come to you then or it wasn't answered. All right, so our participants today, we have some guests from elementary schools around the country. We've got um, Heidi Hutchison back in Baltimore, Maryland from the Friends School. Hi, Heidi. Hi. And we've got Kelly Reese, a member of our national faculty back in Denver. Hi, Kelly. Hi. And down in San Jose, California from the Catherine Smith School, we've got Kevin Armstrong and three students. And I'll ask them to introduce themselves in a second. So, um, I've asked all of our participants today to talk about their projects in terms of the, you know, what the project was about, what the driving question was, what the content was, um, what were some of the, how it turned out, what, what happened in the project. At the end, I'll ask the teachers to reflect on some lessons learned about project-based learning, things they might do differently next time with the project or things that went well and so forth. So let's start with uh, students from Catherine Smith in San Jose. So. Um, how about if you guys tell us your name, and then I'll ask you the first question about your project. Hi, my name is Gerardo. Hi, my name is Valentina. Hi, my name is Tatiana. All right, nice to have you with us, uh, Gerardo, Tatiana, and Valentina. Um, or other way around there, in the middle is Valentina. Okay, so uh, kids, how about you tell us uh, about your project? What was it about? What was the content? Uh, the project was about... Uh, the gold brush and and um, it was about it was about the gold rush and we talked about uh, what happened, how they survived in the gold rush, and how they traveled. Mm -hmm. And that was a big part of California's history, right? Yep. Okay. So, um, what was the driving question for the project? The driving question was, how can we create an engaging and interactive fourth grade field trip to allow students to experience the California border? Oh, how can we create an engaging and interactive field trip to allow students to experience the gold rush? Did I get that close? Um, okay, so you actually made a, like made a field trip in your classroom. All right, so what were some of the, the choices you made during the project? We chose what parts would be included, and so we wanted a time machine to take the kids back in time, and then we wanted some sea route and a land route, and after that would be uh, San Francisco, and then uh, Cave, Mining Town, and um, Pink Town. And after that, we chose what parts we would work on. Um, for example, my group chose that we, we were going to do a play about James Marshall, uh, because we thought that part was missing from the field trip experience. Okay, so you showed different parts of the gold rush. San Francisco, a mining camp, Hangtown. And was this all set up in one classroom? No. Oh, where was it? It was like our fourth grade quad, like all around there. Oh, I see. So it was, was it outdoors then? Yeah. yeah. I see. Um, and did you guys dress up in costumes and stuff? Yeah, we had most of us. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and who were the who visited? I mean, some other students came, but did, did some parents or adults come too? Yeah, yeah. Was it other grade or just fourth grade students who visited? Just fourth grade. Fourth graders, because they're all learning about the gold rush, I see. Okay. All right. Um, and what were some of the skills you practiced in the project? Uh, we practiced, uh, one of the skills we practiced was communication, and how that helped us uh, 
with the Gold Rush project is basically we communicate and we work together. And if we don't communicate, then we don't get stuff done. And and if we don't finish, then it's going to be all failure, and we don't want that to happen <laughs> to our projects. Uh, yeah, right. I can see that. And um, you and you obviously practice a lot of teamwork skills because you all did this as a team, right? Were you were you divided up into different teams and did different things? Yeah. Like, what did your team do? Uh, my team made a couple of wagons, and we also like used communication on that too. We worked together. We all had a part of it, and we got it done. Okay. And my group, my group did uh, play, so we had to work together to make that done in time. And my group did work in San Francisco. We worked on a restaurant, and we had to work together to make sure everything got um, done. We had to make sure everything got painted and put on the walls. Okay. It's a pretty big project. How long did this take? Like a month or how long? Two months. Two months. Two oh months. <laughs> okay, so let me get to the next question was what made this project special? What made for it special? Me, for me, what made it special was teamwork because with teamwork, more ideas makes it better. And if we have teamwork, we also finish work a lot faster. The project was special for me because it was unique, because lots of the other projects, we just presented it, but this one we got to show and we build things. We also practice using the four C's to make better choices. Uh, my, what made my project special and all that, what made this project special for me was we use, like, we didn't argue or anything. We just did our work and our part, and you know, we used communication, a lot of communication, to get the covered wagon done. And I was pretty proud of the covered wagon that we did. All right. Oh, there's a, there's a picture of the covered wagon. That looks cool. Okay. Uh, so you guys are, this was not your first project though, right? You did other projects during the year, so you were kind of used to working in teams? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so by now you were getting really good at it. All right, and the last question then, what was your favorite part of the project? My favorite part of the project was building the covered wagon, and we, and part of the driving question was to make this trip, field trip, make it interactive and engaging. Uh, we made our covered wagon attractive by so they could go in and see what we did inside the covered wagon and how we built it. Um, my favorite part was when my group got to write a play because it, it was more entertaining than just watching a video or reading a book. And it was also interactive because the kids got to answer questions and take a quiz at the end. My favorite part was the whole process of the of the field trip because I like the big organizing math because it helps us organizing the whole project and fixing everything that could be done and everything in. Okay, so that, that big map was pretty interesting. So that's where all the different parts of the project were kind of shown on the wall, and you, you could plan with that. I see. All right, well, sounds like a great project, you guys. So thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, now let's uh, let's go back to Denver and hear about Kelly's project. Kelly, let us know about it. Awesome. Hi, I'm a fourth grade teacher at Sage Canyon Elementary in Castle Rock, Colorado. Um, and our project that we focused on towards the beginning of the year uh, was centered around Colorado government. Um, in fourth grade, we definitely take the burden or excitement, I guess, if you put it that way, of doing all the Colorado history or state history of state government. 
Um, and that can be pretty challenging to make authentic and exciting for kids. So um, as teachers, we really push ourselves to come up with something that we thought our kids would love. So our driving question was, how can we spark changes in our government? So there were two individual products that the kids produced and then two group uh, collaborative projects. So the individuals were um, a letter to our governor, and then um, the students also participated in a debate. And as collaborative teams, they created a recent research survey and sent that to our school community. And then uh, the other group project was uh, creating graphs from the study. So they really analyzed and looked at data. So that were those are some of the big pieces. So the way that we presented the project to the kids was thinking about how government really affects their lives. And so we really brainstormed ways our entry event was having that initial conversation about what they thought the government's role was in a student or a kid's life. And so they thought of all the different ways that the government impacted them. And then we started to reflect and think about what things we weren't really happy with and what things we thought would be needed to make the government or our system or our lives even better. So the kids really thought about um, some different ideas. So to get them even more excited, we took a field trip to our state capitol. And you know, typically that's just kind of a normal tour, but our kids loved being able to ask questions about the process and really see that in action about how an idea can become a law. Um, really let them see some examples of kid power and how kids have made a different difference in our government already. So it was pretty powerful for them. Um, back in our classroom, we created a mini congress. So each child got to choose what role they wanted to take within that congress. And they even aligned themselves with political parties, which is pretty interesting to see what their beliefs were and values. And a lot of that you know, was stemming from their home which was awesome to see that they were having conversations about that with their families. So once they learned the process of making a law, you know, starting with their idea, they created ebooks with uh, partners also to kind of tell that story um, and really helped me, you know, as a formative assessment to see kind of where they were at with just their simple content knowledge. And then uh, we worked together to create a rubric. So in my classroom, we really collaborate to put that together. So I usually pull out some of the bigger pieces that I need them to know. And then they help me build the language of what you know, a four would look like, a three, a two, or a one. Um, and that's really powerful for kids. We post that in our classroom, and then I can refer to it. They can refer to it and kind of check in with their work and see how they're doing. So um, the next part that we did was as groups, they created norms. So once they selected their team products, or projects, sorry, project teams, they created a rubric um, and the norms. So they were able to really think about what they needed to be successful with their collaboration in their group. Gosh, I feel like I'm talking so much. <laughs> uh, the next thing that they did was, um, as a team, they started into their research. So they started brainstorming things that they wanted to see changed or uh, modified in laws that maybe were already created. And as the teams, they narrowed those down, came to consensus. And then they started thinking about how popular their idea would be. So they created a Google form that they sent out to our parent community and then also all the students in the school, which was fantastic to get that much feedback on their ideas. So they asked a variety of questions surrounding their idea to kind of narrow down what would be the most popular idea or what they thought would actually pass if it went into um, Congress. So once they had that initial plan, getting you know got that going, they drafted a letter to Governor Hickenlooper and worked really hard. So a lot of our many lessons were around a business letter, looking at persuasive writing, uh, we did that in guided reading too, so we really pulled in all aspects of literacy and content together. And then of course with their data that they were using uh, from their surveys, we focused a lot of that in math. So it was really transdisciplinary, which was really meaningful for the kids. So they sent their letters to Governor Hickenlooper, and then they engaged in a debate. So students 
took time to prepare their own piece of the pros of their idea, and then students self-selected and a partner that they wanted to go up against. So then they started thinking about the cons of each other's ideas, and the debate was really powerful. So they were able to kind of go back and forth, and there were some eye-opening moments on you know what was really going well and what maybe should have been a little bit modified. Uh, but it was great to see them so engaged and really invested in their learning. Kelly, uh, excuse me, uh, Kelly, was there an audience for the debate, or was it just in the classroom? Well, that was within our classroom. They were not so comfortable yet preparing that for an outside audience. So I videotaped it, which was great to be able to show their families. Um, and that's one of the things that I would have changed about this project is bringing in a more authentic audience kind of throughout. So, you know, for our letter, obviously, we had a really authentic audience. Uh, sending it to Governor Hickenlooper, and he did write back to the kids, which was really cool. Uh, so we got a group letter, and then some of the individuals were able to uh, get an, a, a letter back from him personally to kind of tell them, you know, that their ideas were really fantastic, he wanted to learn more, um, or, you know, sending it on to somebody else. So it really felt like their time was valued, their work was valued by the governor, so that made it really powerful. Um, but yeah, for the debate, I definitely wish, and knowing you know that I will be doing that in the future. Okay. So. All right. So you think it turned out well? The kids learned a lot. It sounds like. Yeah, a lot. It was a ton of content knowledge, and like I said, bringing in math into it, and then you know, really heavy on the literacy as well. It was it was a lot, but it was an awesome, valuable project for the kids. All right. Thank you. Okay, so now let's go back to Maryland on the East Coast. Um, Heidi, tell us about your project. Hi, I am Heidi Hutchison, and I teach fifth grade uh, at Friends School of Baltimore. And this project, I actually started this idea. I went to PBL World in Napa Valley to plug that a little bit, and it started there. And um, John, you actually helped me with the driving question. Oh yeah. Um, is that yeah. <laughs> um, so um, our, I wanted to try a project-based learning project around reading a novel. You know, how, how can you do this? How can you read a book and do a project-based learning in it? And so we read The One and Only Ivan, and the driving question was, do we have the right to capture and cage animals? Um, and the, pro the project at the end would be to create a collaborative book with other classrooms. So it was a, a global PBL. So I went to the Global Classrooms Project with Michael Graffin and I asked if I could put my project up. And um, I wanted other teachers from around the world to, I wanted to see if we could do this, answer the same driving question, and then create a collaborative book uh, together. And, um, and we did. We ended up doing that. Um, these are all, thank you for going to the next slide. This, this is a separate um, wiki that I created on the the original wiki on the site has all of everything that I did, all of the steps that that everybody did to um, to uh, be able to read the book and all of the skills that went with that. Um, creating your need to know list of questions. Your um, we created a, the engagement. I felt a little bit bad because I did tell my students a little bit of a fib. Um, we, the letter, I said that we received a letter, <laughs> I feel bad about this because I work at a Quaker school, but um, we received a letter um, from the World Wildlife Fund asking us to help educate and create this book um, about whether or not we have the right to capture and cage animals. So that was sort of our engagement. I said, you know, to my students, do you want to partake in this? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we read the one and only Ivan, and while we were reading that, we were creating our needs to know list of questions, and they that changed. That was interesting to me that along the way, the need to know list of questions changed, and and that's that's how research works. Um, and they sort of self grouped um, into different groups. And lucky me, what came out during this project but the movie Blackfish. Mm. So yeah, so Tell I was able to. Pardon? Well, tell us more about that movie. I missed that one. Oh, Blackfish. Uh, I think Gabriella Copperweight, uh, Copperweight, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, 
Um, that's the movie where um, it's about SeaWorld and the orcas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I got parent permission and um, because there were some, it, you know, I have fifth graders and I just felt more comfortable doing that because there was some, some tough stuff in that movie. Um, yeah. But it was fantastic. And uh, so my kids did research, and we used Book Creator um, uh, on the um, iPads, and we created our portion of the book. And um, 14 classes signed up, um, but seven different um, seven classrooms participated from Utah, Texas, and Iowa, and um, it sort of has been ongoing throughout the year. And this panda page, we came to consensus, and I talked to the participants in the group. We Skyped with a class in Utah and said, you know, what what um, what place do you want to donate the money to? Because um, we were offering our book on iTunes, and, uh, and I can tell you a whole bunch of stuff I learned about the world of Apple and iTunes thanks to my husband who put our book together. He's my technology educator at my school. Um, but we were able to um, decide on World Wildlife Fund, given the fact that I made that letter up from them. Um, and we are suggesting a $5 donation if you download our book from iTunes to help raise money for, for that organization. Um, another part, this Facebook page that you're looking at, um, Robin Farnsworth from Salt Lake City, Utah, a fantastic teacher, um, she created, she said, how are we going to promote the book? And this just happened a few weeks ago. And she said, do you mind if I create a Facebook page? And I was like, yeah, no, go ahead, create a Facebook page. And in addition to that, if, if on the page before that, the Panda page, they also made a little video. Her kids did the cup song. I don't know if you're familiar with that. You can't see it, but if you visit that page, you'd be able to see. Um, and they, she, her daughter recorded a song to promote our book with their own words. It was fabulous. So on our book, once it's uploaded, it is uploaded to iTunes. We're just waiting for them. Um, you'll see the, the table of contents. It, it ended up being over 320 pages. So I'm actually glad that not all 14 classes participated because I think the book would have been really big. Um, so anyway, that's the table of contents and if you go to the next slide, um, that is the cover of our book, what it would look like if you downloaded it. And if you go to the next slide, um, you'll see it just a sample of work. Um, do we have the right to capture and cage animals? No, never because. And then some some kids said no, never because, but yes, when. Um, so it it was it was amazing. It was a really great great experience. Uh, Kelly, before you mentioned something, I wanted to ask you about. You said the students need to know list questions changed. I mean, I, I know it might have gotten longer, but they also changed the type of questions. May yeah, uh, Heidi? Okay. Oh, sorry, oh, Heidi. Kelly, Heidi. Sorry. Heidi. Heidi may, are you talking to me? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Heidi. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, so because once they started researching, do we have the right to capture and cage animals? You know, the, the thing that I love about project-based learning is that it really allows students to differentiate. Like, they could go as deep as they could go or not. Um, so their, their need to know list of questions changed the more they researched and they would find them. And then we would come back together as a group and conference. Um, I, I was able to include so much content and skills. Uh, it was amazing. All right, cool. It really was. Uh, oh, that, one that of the, one of the things, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, one of the things that I wanted to include was, uh, if we talk about the four C's, um, collaboration and digital citizenship and global citizenship skills that you could embed. It was it was really it was fabulous. All right. All right. Let's show that page of the book. Tell us about that. Oh. Um, oh, there oh, there we go. So uh, the, my students created two pages. Um, one was, do we have the right to capture and cage animals? And they could put no, never, yes, when, or they could just say no, never. 
So these two girls, one of which I was my is my daughter Olivia. I had to give her a little plug there. Um, she, uh, they, when they saw Blackfish and they got so into orcas, they were like, no, we never, absolutely never should capture an orca. And and then they summarized how they felt um, about their research. Other pages, if, if anybody gets a chance to, to download the book, um, kids talked about, well, you know, it depends on if they're a, an endangered species, then yeah, maybe sometimes we do, but not if these circumstances are occurring. So, um, the, the, I, I really loved how much differentiation that the project just, it, it just lent itself to. It wasn't like something that I had to separately create. It was, it was already there. Right. Um, does that make sense? That does. Yeah, that's very cool. It got into a lot of depth, and I like the the, the, the moral issues that you're wrestling with there. So yeah. um, we have a, a short time left. Let's let's hear about some lessons learned about project-based learning, things you might do differently next time, and maybe um, students and Catherine Smith, if you want to, uh, I'll give you a minute to think. I'll start with Heidi, and then I'll ask Kelly, and I'll finish with Catherine Smith and the students, and maybe Kevin, if you want to talk to. Is there anything you would do differently next time if you were going to do a project like that again? Um, I mean, it's something you learned, by the way, that this project worked. Okay, so let's start with Heidi. Any lessons you learned about PBL? Um, so with PBL, what I was what I was surprised about was um, I thought that the students would just choose one side of an issue, um, but that it provided an opportunity to be empathetic to more than one perspective. Um, which I was pleasantly surprised about because empathy is something that our, our Quaker school that we teach and it's it's hard to sometimes. Um, but I next time I think this was a big project. The, this is only my second PBL I've ever done. The other project I did was a something called the Malala project, and I think that I would enlist the help if I was going to do a global big project again. I would list enlist the help of other teachers outside of my classroom um, to, to be able to really get feedback with and take over some of the managing um, aspects of it. Um, but I I would never, I, this was a, doing PBL is a game changer for me. It really right. is. All right, great to hear. Thanks, Heidi. All right, Kelly, lessons you learned about PBL or things you might do differently next time? So one of the things that this project really brought out in my students sort of was a sense of empowerment. And I don't think that they would have felt so much of a can-do attitude before doing it this way. And um, I think it made it clear to them that they have a voice in their community, they have a voice in their state, and it might not make a difference right at this point in time, but they're sparking changes. And I think that uh, that was probably the most powerful piece coming out of here. I and mean, they definitely had a lot of voice and choice within the project, so that was really engaging for them, where they got to choose what their ideas were. They got to choose you know, what their letter looked like, or um, who their debate partners even were. That stuff is meaningful for kids. Um, and I was able to embed a ton of standards and significant content into this project, and it wasn't overwhelming. It was smooth and its transitions between uh, each content area and literacy and math and so it felt natural which was awesome. Um, and we already talked a little bit about what I would do different with bringing in a more authentic audience. Um, but truly, I mean, this took content and made it meaningful for the kids. Um, and it also built their stamina. I think having something a little bit heavier uh, really showed their work ethic and value in their education. So, um, yeah, it was it was all day every day, and I loved it. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, Kelly. So you might do that one again. It sounds like absolutely. All right. Okay. So back to Catherine Smith. So students or teacher Kevin Armstrong, any uh, lessons you learned about project-based learning or things you might do differently next time? Hi, Kevin. Hi, guys. Anything you want to share? Uh, I think I'll do differently make the what we say longer because it was kind of short and 
Super Talk, I mean, I was pretty tired of everything else. I mean, really long ago. What I learned about myself or PBL was that I didn't really know that I could talk to other people in like not be nervous so much and present to them. Yeah, and one thing I would like to add, I think the, the biggest piece for us was you saw the picture of that map. Um, and when we started that activity, the students, all we did was have some lines and some boxes, and they connected the dots, and they came back the next day and evaluated and added components and moved components. And that was a big aha for us as teachers. And so uh, going forward, I think, trying to remove ourselves from some of those processes uh, as much as possible and being more of the facilitators and helping them you know, meet each day and set goals, that's going to be a big push for us going forward. And we're incredibly proud of all the fourth grade, and especially these guys, for being brave to, to do the hangout. All right. Yeah, thank you, students, for, uh, for hanging out with us. I really enjoyed what you had to say. And thanks, Kelly and Heidi. So um, we'll wrap up now. As I said, folks out there, if you uh, want to post questions uh, to our Google Plus events page, you can. Uh, tell people you know if they want to watch the Hangout, it'll be in our website's archive at BIE.org. And next week, we'll be uh, spotlighting projects from middle schools from different parts of the country uh, from student work will be shown, too. So we hope you'll join us next Wednesday, uh, May 21st, same time, 5 p.m. East, excuse me, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So thanks for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks.